Okay, here's a video on how to find unit rates. For example, how to find miles per hour or dollars per pound. So that is the skill that is listed on your ready report if you miss these questions. So let's go ahead and dive in here. First, what does per mean? So per means like for every or for each or for one. And so if you take uh, a common example here, miles per hour, you would use as miles divided by the number of hours. Same with dollars per pound, dollars over the pound. In other words, the divided sign is uh, the word per. And hopefully you recognize this as in like percent. Percent is uh, per 100. Okay, when you do percent, it's per 100, okay? So some number out of 100, you're scaling it out of 100, where here you're scaling it to one pound or one hour, okay? We'll come back to percents in a minute. So usually solve these type of problems by setting up equivalent fractions or ratios and then cross multiplying and then dividing. So... Let's say we got this example here. If a car can travel 50 miles in three hours, part one, what is their miles per hour so far? So again, miles per hour is going to be miles on top per hour. Okay, and so we're doing, uh, we have 50 miles in three hours. And so we want, here's our equivalent fraction, we want over one hour. So notice we have hour, three hours, and then one hour. We can even put these here. And so we want to solve for this. So now this is where that cross multiplying and dividing comes in. Let me use some different colors here. So we're going to take 50 times one hour. So 50 times one is going to be 50. Okay, and then let's use a darker, different shade of blue rather, 3 times x, so 3, I'll do a dot for the multiplication, so then that will equal 3x, and so there we've cross multiplied, now we divide to isolate x here, so we're going to divide each side by 3 to undo that multiplication, these cancel out, and x is equal to 50 divided by 3, so let's come over here to the calculator. 50 divided by 3 is roughly, you could round up to about 17 or 16.7. Okay, so how long would it take them to travel 175 miles? So again, I would do the same thing. Miles over hours. And so if this is for one hour, there's a couple ways of doing it. This is how I would do it. Um, I would take this 50 for 3. And so we did 50 miles in 3 hours. And now we want to see how long it's going to take to go 170, sorry, 175 miles. So we want the hours. So again, we're going to cross multiply here. 3 times 175. Uh, let's put that in the calculator. 3 times 175 is 525. That's not our answer though, because we need to set that equal to 50 times x. I'm using the dot for the multiplication, which is 50x. So now we're going to divide. Here's the So we cross multiplied here, and now we're dividing. Okay. So 525 divided by uh, 50 it's 10.5 there is another way of doing it once you find the miles per hour uh, you can divide that into 175 and again it's going to be roughly about 10 hours so that would be I'm just do it quickly 175 divided by that 16.7 that we found the reason why I don't necessarily like that way is I like to teach it consistently the same way. Use the information they give you, set up proportional fractions, cross multiply, then divide. Um, I find that students make less mistakes doing that, so I teach this when it comes to percents and um, really any sort of ratio, the same process. 
So here we go. Wong bought five oranges for $2.25. What is the price per orange and how many oranges could he get for $50? So again, we want the price per orange. So price on top, there's your per, and here's orange. So the number of oranges, uh, we'll put in oranges here. So the price goes on top is $2.25 um, divided by five. That will give us the number that it's going to cost per one orange. But again, I always like to teach the cross multiplication. So you could just take 22.25 divided by five. But let me show you that if you do it this way, it's the same thing. So if we do 225 times one, of course, we're going to get 2.25. And then we take 5x equals 5 times x. That equals 5x. So then we divide each side by 5, cross multiply, then divide. Those cancel out. Look, we're back to where we were. Okay? So um, it might seem redundant. And why would you do, spend, do all that extra work? It's because you want to get used to the process. So we're looking at 45 cents. Um, per orange, let me write that two different ways because I see this sometimes, 45 cents or 0 0.45 cents if it's in dollars, okay? All right, so now how many oranges could you get for $50? Again, I'm going to set it up as cross-multiplying. I'm going to do the price over the number of oranges, and I'm going to use what they first gave us, 2.25 over five and we want to see well how much could you buy for fifty dollars it's going to be a lot of oranges let's see so that becomes x we want the number of oranges so look everything is in line here oranges five before and how many if we scale that up to fifty dollars so using a different color black we'll do 2.25 times x to give us 2.25 times x, which is going to be 2.25x, and then 5 times 50, 5 times 50 is going to be 250, you can put it in the calculator if you need to, um, 250, oh, pin does that sometimes when I go back and forth, so there's 250. So now, again, we want to isolate x, so we're going to divide by what's being multiplied by x, which is $2.25. So we're going to divide that in $2.25 into 250. So 250, 250 divided by 2.25 equals, that's a roughly... Uh, we would have enough for 111 oranges. We can't round up. Um, so again, that is kind of, you know, we're sort of diving into ratios here, but a unit rate is is uh, is a ratio. So um, there also can be used for percentages. So use cross, multiply, and divide to, to solve percentage problems as well. So let's say a couple drives 35 miles out of the 170-mile trip. What percentage have they completed out of their trip? I just like to show this to show the similarity of why I teach it this way. So again, um, in this case, we have the part. This is just a basic definition of a fraction: part over the whole or the total. Okay, that's your basic definition. In this case, this 35 is the part of the trip, and so the part is 35. The total up here is 170 and so now we want it out of a percent well we always have to bring a hundred percent to the problem hundred percent is the whole or the total and so now we want to see what percentage 35 out of 170 is okay assuming um, I can show you a couple different ways to do this with the calculator so let me switch to red okay so we'll do 35 times 100 35 times 100, and then we'll do 170 times x. 170 times x. 35 times 100 is just 35, and then add the two zeros for 3,500 equals 170x. So now this x is being multiplied by 170, so we have to undo that. 
we divide by 170, divide by 170, those cancel out. So let's take 3,500, divided by 170, equals uh, roughly 20, we'll round up to 20, 21%. Okay, the other way you could do it is you can, let me clear this over here on the calculator, if you can use the calculator, hit the N over D button, and you could do 35, and then arrow down over 170, um, arrow over, and then hit enter, and it will give you, in this case, it reduces it to a fraction, but let's say, again, we want that percentage, we can do second convert to percent right here. You see where my cursor is uh, circling? That's the convert to percent. So now we're converting seven, and th seven over 34, and sure enough, we get the same answer. Okay, let's dive in. So slope is also a constant rate of something. Um, it can be used to find a unit rate. So, you know, let's say this is miles. Let's say we're walking or something, because uh, we're going quite a bit slower here. Miles per hour over here, right? Slope is the change in um, y over the change in x. In other words, it's the rise over the run, right? So if this is 0, 0, and we go up um, to here, we go up 6, so we're going to go rise 6, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, until we're in line, and then we're going to have to go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that can be reduced to 3 fourths, which if we want is going to be 0.75 miles per hour, which is kind of a slow walk. Okay, so that is another way of finding um, a unit rate that I see on the GED. So there's a good place to practice all of these. So on my website, passtheged.org, you can go and, and I have linked all the Khan Academy exercises. Again, I'm at no affiliation with Khan Academy. I'm not taking any money uh, from this channel or anything. So just trying to help students out here. So you can go to... Um, the uh, again my website and then find unit rates and then these link here to different Khan Academy um, exercises to help you. All right, good luck on the GED. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video if you found it valuable and subscribe if you would like to see more videos like these. Visit the link below to passthegd.org to see more videos and learning opportunities that will help you get the highest passing score on the GED. And good luck.